Southlands looking for some fun. Yeah, well, a whole bunch of champs done come in here to Athens and got bushwhacked between the hedges. Five of eight over the years, to be exact. Started in 29, first year in the new stadium. The Bulldogs gave it to the boys from Georgia Tech. And almost four decades ago, the tide come in riding high, got rolled right back to Alabama. And don't forget about those upstart Tigers from Clemson, sent them packing back in 82. Well, we got the LSU Tigers coming today. We got them right where we want them, between the hedges, with defending national champs. Skyler Green gets the handoff, turns the corner, tries to go to the outside. He's streaking down the far sidelines. He scores! Tigers are the national champion! What a game it's going to be. of Georgia on the field at Sanford Stadium. They've won three. They are ranked third. And as we come to you live, the defending national champions, the Tigers of Louisiana State University. One defeat earlier this season. Nick Saban's punch dropped a one-point loss to the Auburn Tigers. We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. This one has a little significance. The LSU Tigers and the Bulldogs of Georgia. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Todd Blackledge and Tracy Wolfson. This one has the promise of something special. LSU 13 and 1 a year ago, co national champs en route. They took Georgia down twice a nail biter in Baton Rouge and an old fashioned trip to the woodshed in the conference title game in December. This afternoon, they come to Athens to take on an undefeated Georgia team that has not lost at home in the last 16 games. And a Georgia team still simmering with anger at the memory of that December humiliation. This has real promise, Todd. <laughs> sure in a does. game of this magnitude, what do you look for early? Well, first of all, in a game this big, kicking game and special teams and, and turnovers always important. But as you get more specific and look at what Georgia needs to do to win, number one, they've got to be physical. I mean, this game is going to be a 60-minute battle of the wills, and Georgia has to be physical on both sides of the ball in order to stand up to the way LSU plays football. The second thing, their senior wide receiver receivers Fred Gibson and Reggie Brown have to make some big plays outside against tight man-to-man -man coverage there'll be opportunities they've got to make them what does LSU have to do number one they've got to run the ball successfully the better that they run the football the better their two quarterbacks will play last week 272 yards rushing the other thing they've got to affect David Green in two games last year against Georgia 10 sacks 10 deflections and a many many more knockdowns and hits Near perfect weather, 80 degrees, uh, humidity of 56%. The forecast for partly cloudy. Rain may uh, accumulate here, but uh, after the game has been concluded. They've not played all that many times. This is the 25th get-together. LSU won both last year, the 17-10 game in Baton Rouge. That was as hard-hitting and emotional as any regular season game we saw. And then they manhandled this Georgia team in the conference championship. LSU won the toss. They have elected to defer the option to the second half. That means Georgia gets the ball to open this thing, and Chris Jackson will kick it off. The deep men are Brian McClendon and Tyson Browning. Does any wonder how big a game this is? I don't know if he's always there, but David Pollock is on the kickoff return team for Georgia, standing right at the 50-yard line. I'd say this game's a big one. Jackson will kick off. He also is the putter and the place kicker. Midway into the end zone, take a knee, come out to the 20. And let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. 
Thanks, Vern. Well, as you mentioned, Georgia is riding a 16-game home win streak. The last time they lost here at Sanford Stadium was in November of 2001. And so the theme all this week has been defend your turf. Yesterday, each player was reminded of that as they received a sheet of paper at their locker that listed the 11 years Georgia has won an SEC championship. And in all those years combined, Georgia had just one home loss. Today, the Bulldogs will try and keep the streak alive. Vern, back to you. Okay, Tracy, Mark Rick looks on as David Green opens a quarterback, the Bulldogs in the eye. Danny Ware, the true freshman, is back in the lineup. He missed a game with a bruised lung. Ware gets the handoff. He gets two yards across the, well, maybe only one. As uh, forward progress is out just across the 20-yard line. David Green, senior, for the season, 55%, three touchdowns, only one interception. The most important stat is that far, a lot of bottom line, 35 and 8. A lot of wins and a lot of starts. That means a lot of experience. No huddle now for the Georgia offense. And a nice defensive play quickly in the line for LSU. And let's introduce you to the ballpark Franks Georgia offensive starting lineup. Inman Jones, Tanner, Max Gene Gillis, and Dennis Rowland. Danny Ware and Des Williams in the backfield. Brown and Gibson the wideouts. Leonard Pope is the tight end. It's third and eight. Last year in two games, only eight of 30 conversions on third down for Georgia against this LSU defense. Here comes the blitz. They need a big play. They don't get it as Corey Webster was back to defend on Reggie Brown. It'll be fourth down. And, and that's the matchup I talked about in the beginning of the show. One on one outside against tight man to man coverage. The wide receivers of Georgia against two outstanding cover corners. Corey Webster may be the best cornerback in all of college football. Reggie Brown got a hand on it, but so did Webster. On fourth down, Gordon Ely Kelso is on to punt. He missed one game, suspended for the opening game of the season. Skyler Green, who's missed the last three because of a high ankle sprain, is back to return the punt. So good news for LSU to get Green back. He was the star of last year's 17-10 victory in Baton Rouge. A lot of changes on the punt protection on this opening kick. Ely Kelso, high, deep, fair catch taken by Skyler Green at the 38-yard line. And that's a 40-yard punt, nothing on the return. Marcus Randall, fifth-year senior from Baton Rouge. You will see him. You will also see Jamarcus Russell this afternoon, but it's Randall, the senior, who now starts his fifth game. Yeah, and the last three games, he has led LSU on a touchdown drive to start each of the last three games. So he's come out playing very well early the last three weeks. Skyler Green is on the field. He opens the game at a wideout, bottom of the screen. Here's the handoff. Allie Broussard, there's also a flag down. Movement on LSU. They tried to go on a quick count, but they weren't all set at the same time, and it should knock him back five. Edward Golston made the contact. And Steve Landis is our referee today. Before the snap, ball start, number 89, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Well, you've met the quarterback. Let's introduce you to the rest of the LSU offense. Up front, Whitworth, Arnold, Wilkerson, who is terrific. Miss Wanger and Livings. Justin Vincent and Stelts in the backfield. Green, Bo, the wideouts. The tight end is David Jones. Jacob Hester is in a fullback now. He shares the backfield with Broussard. Play fake. And Randall finds Skyler Green open in front of Demario Minter. At the 38, they got the five back. Defensively, let's uh, introduce you to the Georgia bunch. Will Thompson, Golston, Anderson, and the two-time All-American David Pollock. The linebackers, and they get Odell Thurman back in the middle. He, he was suspended for the first three games for a team rules violation. Minter, Thomas Davis, an All-American, Greg Blue, and Tim Jennings in the backfield. I think it's important for Thurman. He's a high-energy guy. He's really got to keep his focus here early. Don't let his emotions get the most of him. He hasn't played for a while. And a time was called by the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, this has been an enthusiastic <laughs> start. There's a little energy in this building. We'll be right back. Time now for the quarterback comparison presented by Argent Mortgage. We'll focus on the two LSU quarterbacks. 
Randall the starter, Jamarcus Russell the reliever, and you can see that uh, the gaudier figures in terms of touchdowns and yards belong to this man. He is a redshirt freshman, a big one, 6'5", 248, with a rifle arm. But it's Randall in the cockpit right now. Second down and 10, here comes the blitz, and Ali Broussard is medical on the scrimmage. Well, you'll hear us talk about David Pollock a lot in this ball game, but he doesn't always get credit for the tackle. But what he does do is he beats double teams. He just affects plays. He fights through things. This time he does make the tackle. They tried to block him with a tight end, Keith Zinger, and that is a mismatch for LSU. You're not going to block David Pollock with many tight ends anywhere. Pollock with two sacks this season, two and a half. He's within two and a half of becoming the all-time career sack leader. Now here's where you got to keep an eye on not only Pollock, but Thomas Davis, number 10. Davis comes on the blitz. Randall heading left. He pays the price, and it was Thomas Davis who helped force the issue. See, this is not an all-out blitz by Georgia. It's zone defense. That's why Randall couldn't go anywhere with the ball, but these guys rushed the passer so well. David Pollock and Thomas Davis. Davis is a 235-pound safety. There he is on the inside move. Two guys are there to try to block him, but he's too fast for either one of them. He gives chase. Pollock gives chase. Down goes Randall. It'll be Ray Gant who gets credit for the sack. It's fourth down. The return is on now. And Chris Jackson is back to punt. Uh, punt returns have been a problem. And Tim Jennings is going to return a punt in college. No, he won't. Uh, Jackson shanked it. Thank you very much, as Pat Hayden would well, say. it was a bad snap. It was a high snap, and Jackson had to go up in the air to field it, and then he rushed the kick, and he got off a poor one. 37-yard punt. He got a little bit on the goal. David Pollock. He is your basic high-motor guy. And Georgia has the ball on offense. Scoreless first quarter thus far as these two great teams do battle between the hedges. And let's introduce you to the uh, LSU defensive line. Spears and Dorsey, Williams and Melvin Oliver. The linebackers, Allie Highsmith, a true freshman, Lionel Turner and Cameron Vaughn. And two great cornerbacks, Travis Daniels, Corey Webster, LaRon Landry outstanding as a free safety and Jesse Daniels is also back there. Green and the Bulldogs. They have played defending champions and defeated them five out of eight times. Here's the blitz coming again. Green, play fake. Comes out, he'll run it. Tucks it and is chased by Lionel Turner out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Well, LSU, nothing's different, is yeah. it? I mean, they're going to do what they do, you know, and that, that's the way they play it. Georgia has seen a lot of zone, very soft defense. This team doesn't do that. They come after the quarterback. They like to blitz. It's not all all-out blitz. A lot of times they'll drop a lineman and play zone, but they're going to bring pressure and try to affect the opposing quarterback. Good decision by the senior David Green there. On the quick count, here's the give around the left side. It's Danny Ware, number 28. The true freshman who opened this season with 135 yards in the first game against Georgia Southern. Ah, yes, but out west, Tim, there's still that Utah fly in the ointment for you. <laughs> first down and 10. This is Gibson, Fred Gibson in motion. Green, play fake, pressure, little shovel pass, Danny Ware. <laughs> he breaks a tackle and picks up five yards. It was this, he didn't know that was coming. Well, it, it wasn't supposed to go that way because what happened was Danny Ware missed his man. And because he missed his man in protection, David Green had to get rid of the football. And watch Danny Ware now. He's going to supposed to to pick somebody up that comes unblocked right there. He doesn't get a piece of Kyle Williams. So David Green says, "Okay, if you missed him, try to do something catching it." And he did. Turned it into a positive play. And uh, before the afternoon is out, we're going to see Tony Milton, I think, number nine, the hard luck junior who missed all of, almost all of last season, but his fourth is blocking. Here's Ware. His nice. strong point is running. And a nice run audible by David Green. He got into his cadence. He saw what the defense was doing. And he checked to an outside run against this LSU defense. 
and you can do that at home a lot better than you can do on the road. You can check an audible. He got it in the hands of his best ball carrier, Danny Ware, and Danny Ware off to a very good start for this Georgia offense. And it's very important that Georgia runs the ball with some success, just like it's important for LSU. It sets up everything else Georgia does. They'll go back to Danny Ware. Nice, elusive step in the backfield, and he's inside the 30 and is brought down at the 26 after a gain of nine. You know, it's in watching these guys on film, they are a different football team with Danny Ware. And I'm not saying that to take anything away from the other backs that they have, but this guy brings a toughness. He brings a little bit of a different edge in running the football. Even though he's a young guy, he's a freshman, he still runs very physical and very tough. And he, he adds a different dimension to this Georgia offense. And he is spelled for the moment by another true freshman, five foot eight inch Thomas Brown. Wearing number 20 behind the senior David Green at second down and one. They'll try Thomas Brown to the right side. He gets inside the 25-yard line, and it appears he has enough for the first down. Thomas Brown only listed at 185 pounds, but when they test these guys for strength, pound for pound, they think he may be the toughest guy or the strongest guy on the team. In fact, would have been voted that if freshmen were eligible to receive that honor. But he's a very strong, compact guy out of Tucker High School. And that's in suburban Atlanta. Thomas Brown, the only running back recruited yeah. last year. They uh, chose not to go after Darius Walker, who's been an outstanding freshman for Notre Dame because of Brown. And here's Brown this time, nothing there. He's uh, back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Yeah, Kyle Williams, uh, we talk about the motor that David Pollock plays with. Kyle Williams for LSU, same kind of player. I mean, Chad Lavalle was the other guy inside last year that played with a relentless style. Kyle Williams, 6'2", 295-pound junior out of Ruston, Louisiana, plays a very high-energy game on the inside. From the spread on second and ten, blitz threatened by LSU. Here's Green up with the audible. Another check. And the blitz coming. They bring five. Here's Green. Let's it go. He's got a man open. Gibson tipped away. Incomplete. Fred Gibson, who had only two touchdowns all of last year. He's had a drought of immense proportions. Yeah. And there's stunts, a good blitz pickup down the right sideline, caught, touchdown Georgia, Reggie Brown. The last time David Green tried to go on the deep route to Reggie Brown, they went against Corey Webster. The ball was a little underthrown and Webster knocked it away. This time, a perfect throw. Reggie Brown working on Travis Daniels. The little stick move and a perfect placement for the football over the outside shoulder for the touchdown. Redshirt freshman Andy Bailey for the extra point. This one is true. Now, well, David Green said to us yesterday, we need to make plays on the outside. Yep. Well, there's one. And he also said ball placement by him, critical. That ball was placed perfectly. Third time in the first quarter that the Bulldogs have gone deep. They connect. It's green to brown and Georgia by seven. Brandon Katu is the kickoff specialist. And this one very close to the sideline. But it will be brought back by Xavier Carter, who has blazing speed. He's down at the 25-yard line. And LSU will get it back. Here's David Green. And uh, the author of the touchdown. Well, we saw Danny Ware make some great runs, but I want you to watch him here picking up the blitz. This was probably the best play he made in the drive, picking up Cameron Vaughn on the blitz, getting enough of a piece of him to allow David Green to make the throw. Important for him to run the football, just important for him to pick up the blitz. Ali Broussard is the only running back. Three wideouts now for LSU. They operate from their own 25. Broussard, two yards. David Pollock with the tackle, number 47. In this Georgia defense, uh, they know how important it is for them to stop the run. Last year, they didn't do a great 
job of it. They did a better job when they played in Baton Rouge, but they didn't do a very good job in the SEC championship game. Justin Vincent ran for 201 yards. He ran for 292 as a team against Brian Van Gorder's defense. Stopping the run is the very first primary thing you have to do against LSU. Put the ball in the quarterback's hands. LSU with two tight ends on second and eight. Broussard, seven yards back. Here's a play fake. Randall, there comes Pollock. Got him. David Pollock. Well, we saw a tight end try to block David Pollock. This time, Ali Broussard's going to try to block him. This guy, throughout his career, since he came on as a sophomore, has just been a big play guy who plays with a relentless energy that has made him one of the favorite players ever to play for the University of Georgia. There's 47 jerseys all over Sanford Stadium. And most recently, he's going to beat a back and a guard, neither one of them quick enough to get out there. That was Niswanger and Ali Broussard. Three and a half sacks for the season now, closing in on the all-time Georgia mark. Third and 19. They hand it off, and this is Joseph Adai, number 10. Now, David Pollock, as we mentioned, had 14 sacks in his sophomore season. Seven and a half last year. He's chasing the mark held by Richard Tarditz, the outstanding player from the 80s with 29. And he looks explosive this year. I mean, he finished last year at 292 pounds. He went on a crazy diet, got down to 250 in the spring. He's back up to 266, but he is very quick coming off the edge this season. Now, Chris Jackson on to punt, and Tim Jennings, if he catches this and returns it, it will mark the first time in his college career that he has returned a punt. They've had problems with Tyson Browning fumbling. This is a terrific punt. And Jennings, there's going to be a flag. Well, they're going to get Reggie Brown for either a hold or an illegal block trying to protect, protect Jennings. I'm not so sure it wasn't Reggie Brown that tripped up Jennings as well. Daniel Francis was the man down there for LSU. 50-yard punt, and we'll tack on. There's uh, Nick Saban. Block in the back by the receiving team, number one. 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, Reggie Brown, a starting wide receiver. Here's going to be the illegal block. As he's coming down, he's got to try to get his head in front and his hands clearly behind Daniel Francis, and that's what brought out the penalty. Uh, Reggie Brown and the Georgia offense. Mark Rick's bunch will be back on the field when we return. Georgia up 7 nothing. As you heard Todd talk about, David Pollock's off-season regimen was important for him. Yeah, he's received accolades and a lot of attention these last three years, but he still feels like he has to get better. I spoke to him yesterday. He said, we didn't win a national championship last year like LSU, so we still have a lot to strive for. That motivated him. He also said he looked pretty ugly in a bathing suit. That was motivation as well. <laughs> yes. DJ Shockley is on as a change of pace now. Played only three game, uh, three plays last to game against Marshall. Here's Shockley. Lobs it out incomplete. Well, he did not play. Shockley did not in the uh, come from behind win over South Carolina. And Mark Richt apologized to him, said, I just uh, didn't get you in the game. Yeah. I will get you in each game so uh, from now on. And I asked Mark right before the game, do you know what you're going to do with Shockley? He says, I, I, I'm certain that he will play sometime in the first half, but he didn't know when. I think he just feels after that first touchdown or a little lead, decent field position, get him in the game right now. Well, DJ Shockley, those of you who followed Georgia over the years, knows gives this team a different dimension. Much more of a run threat scramble. And here's uh, Shockley with a change of pace. Injured for much of his career. No blitz. Shockley will run or try to. Eludes a tackle. Gets out of bounds. Dangerously close to being hit in the Georgia bench area. Well, we've seen a lot of two quarterback situations in college football, and a lot of them right here in the SEC. And what D.J. Shockley can give that maybe David Green can't is this ability to make some people miss as a ball carrier, as a runner. He eludes a couple tackles and then the speed to outrun Cameron Vaughn to the sideline. 
and turns in a nice play for the Georgia offense. There is no flag. It's third and one. And an official timeout has been made for uh, the measurement as they bring the chain out. Uh, David Green, it, it, it used to be such a subject of controversy here. I think both Shockley and Green are very comfortable yes. with the quarterback rotation now. Well, I've said, you know, whenever we talk about two quarterbacks, the first thing I always say is that it, it all depends on how the two guys involved handle the situation. And, and primarily David Green, because he's the starter, you know, so how he handles it and how they encourage each other and work with each other and help each other is, is what sets the tone for the rest of the team. And both of these guys have handled the situation tremendously. I mean, DJ Shockley, you know, he'll be the guy next year. And uh, so it's important for him to stay involved and, and stay up to speed with everything that's going on. Saw that uh, Georgia did get the first down and Shockley stays in. Well, they've been they've been able to play in 18 games over the course of their simultaneous careers, and Georgia is 16 and two when both men play at quarterback. Here's Shockley, handoff. Ware coming left, and Danny Ware out across the 32-yard line. Lionel Turner with the tackle, number 58. I made the, the comment that it's important for Georgia to run out of the I formation, to have some success. They don't have to run for 200 yards against LSU because that, you know, LSU is the best rushing defense in the SEC, but they've got to run with enough success to set up their play action stuff that they do out of the I formation. That's where they get their big plays in the passing game is off of play action from the I. And if they can run like they're doing right now, it opens up a whole bunch of stuff for them. Well, you see they're allowing only 77 yards on the ground per game, second and six. Shots in the time. Deep for Reggie Brown, who's open. Webster can't get back. How about that? And that's it. They run the ball with some success, then they fake out of the eye formation and throw deep against man-to-man -man coverage. Reggie Brown with another big catch. They fake here, but Reggie Brown is going to go to the post, and it's only going to be against Webster. No safety help. They're going to stay up and look inside. And Shockley steps up in the pocket and delivers a strike. The other thing that play action does for you, it helps your linemen protect. Because if the off or defense is thinking run also, it's easier to protect. Danny Ware rips it over left guard and plunges inside the 15 to the 13 yard line after the 46 yard pass play. And this is like night and day from what we saw in December last year in Atlanta in the SEC championship from a physical standpoint. The Georgia offensive line taking it to this LSU front seven. This is an offensive line that gave up 47 sacks a year ago. They never had a guy run for over 100 yards from the running back position. They had a lot of mixing and matching of, of guys because of injuries. This five group is doing a great job today. Slip it inside of the 10-yard line. It's Des Williams, number 35. Well, the, uh, the guys up front are Inman and Jones, Tanner, Max Gene Gillis, who's moved to a guard position. And a, a huge guy at right tackle, six foot nine inch Dennis Bowen. Continuity has uh, has really been yeah. helpful for him. Absolutely. I mean, and the other thing is, is that all five of these guys, I know it's early in the season, but they played the same position all the way through training camp. They haven't had to move guys around, and so their their cohesiveness, their continuity, plus that year of maturity has made a big difference for this offensive line. See, six field goals, six touchdowns on the previous game's trips. Here comes the blitz. Good blitz. Pick up. Screen pass. A little low. And Marcus Spears is there to nail Des Williams. Yeah, nice play by Marcus Spears. You know, top of the day, you said that Georgia must well, they had to do two things. They had to be physical. They had to match the physical nature of LSU, which they've done, and they've got to make some big plays outside. They missed their first two shots outside, but Reggie Brown has made two big ones against man-to-man -man coverage. So, so far, they're doing exactly what they need to do here at home. Well, Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator at LSU, who, by the way, was a captain for this Georgia team in the 90s. There's Will. War number 30 for the Bulldogs. Uh, he said in the cha in the conference championship game, Georgia went deep 12 times and only connected twice. They go deep again. Here's Gibson adjusting, knocked away by Webster. Well, the Georgia fans are calling for interference, but Corey Webster just has such tremendous ball skills and great hands. He was recruited as a wide receiver. 
Now, he doesn't see the ball. He's watching Fred Gibson's eyes. He never sees the ball. He did run into him. They, they might have been able to call something. But he gets his hands in there nonetheless. And you know, when you're an All-American, sometimes you get a break when it comes to some calls like that. Third down. Third and goal. Here comes the blitz threatened again and Shockley up to make the adjustment. Thomas Brown is in. Danny Ware is on the Georgia bench. And hand it off. You know what happened? LSU baited him that time. And Will Muschamp guessed right. And Nick Saban. They showed the blitz. They baited him into checking the, the play. And then they backed out and stopped him on third down. And uh, Danny Ware, we mentioned, was on the bench. Let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. That's right, Vern. He's sitting on the bench. He was bleeding on the left side of his head. It looked like he already had a cut there, and it might have reopened. They're treating him right now. We'll let you know if we have anything further. Okay, Trace, fine. He missed a game and a half with a bruised lung. Now, Andy Bailey, the redshirt freshman, who is 6 of 8 for the season. And this one is good. 7 of 9. And Georgia extends the lead to 10. Where it is 10 nothing. Timmy Siskel. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Brando. Yeah. <laughs> Here's uh, Danny Ware getting that, that's a head perfect. Up. I mean, that, you know, obviously he's not hurt bad. That, that's perfect. That's what this game is like. I mean, that, that's the kind of game we have here. It's going to be a 60-minute battle of the wills. Tough physical football. Get the uh, flute and the drum and the yep. torn-up flag, and, and let's let's play. Danny Ware didn't qualify academically. Spent uh, last football season at Hargrave Military Academy. Qualified academically, and he enrolled in Georgia in January, so was able to go through spring ball with the Bulldogs. Now Brandon Cattu ready to kick off. If I was a prep school, I wouldn't want to play Hargrave. I I've seen a lot of great players <laughs> that have been played at Hargrave the last couple of years. Well, I bet they whoop up on some folks. Kind of like the football equivalent of the Oak Hill Academy in uh -huh. basketball. Here's the kick by Cattu. It's a good one. It will be returned by Xavier Carter. He's being chased, and he's down at the 21-yard line. Now, Sanford Stadium holds 92,000 plus. It is the fifth largest on campus stadium in the country, and partisans have enjoyed this one as Georgia has controlled the play here in the first quarter, and they lead it 10 0. And very important now for the LSU offense to get something going. Their first two possessions, they were three and out on both possessions. They've got to let their defense rest a little bit right here. They had scored in their first two possessions of each of the previous three games. Here's Skyler Green, big play for LSU. And Skyler Green moves it out to the 33-yard line on a 13-yard game. Greg Blue with the tackle. Good news for LSU to have Skyler Green back healthy. He had a high ankle sprain in August. He's going to come from this part of the screen. He's in the slot. A little uh, inside screen, and his ankle looks good. That's going to be a positive thing for him early in this ball game to feel good because he will be an important part of what LSU need, needs to do offensively. Justin Vincent is on the field for the first time in the ball game now. The sophomore running back, he gets the handoff, goes left, breaks a tackle, and then runs into Odell Thurman who is joined uh, as an all-star in this team by David Pollock and Thomas Davis. Here's Pollock so far today, Todd. Well, David Pollock uh, has come to play today. I mean, he has gotten in on some running plays. He's got a sack. He's been getting chipped and double teamed, but he's never stopped fighting. I mean, he fights his way and finds his way to the football here. A big sack on Randall. Playing with a, a cast on his left hand. He has a fractured thumb that he got the Wednesday in practice before the Marshall game. Just told us it was a little bruise yesterday. That's right. Now. Second down and four. Ten nothing Georgia in the first quarter. Here's Vincent. Bubble. Bubble. It's on the ground. Georgia has it. Quentin Moses, number 94. A great call by Brian Van Gorder calling a blitz, expecting the run. Sometimes you blitz because you want to stop the run. Thomas Davis is going to come on the blitz and drill the ball carrier. Watch it.
him right here. Watch him come in and knock the ball loose from Justin Vincent. It's a run blitz. Nobody picks him up. He knocks the ball loose, and Georgia gets the football in good field position. Dropsy has been a problem for LSU this year. That is the eighth, eighth fumble lost in four games and a quarter. First down at the 35. Green is back in. Thomas Brown reverses field. Now he's being chased. Gets loose. Back to the 40. <laughs> Down to the 31. He ran 65 yards for a five-yard game. These two freshman backs putting a little excitement into the Georgia offense. It looked like Thomas Brown was going to be stopped for about a 10-yard loss, and he turned it into a big play. Nice way to end the first quarter. That is the end of the first with a score, 10-0 Bulldogs. We'll return to Sanford Stadium on the campus of Georgia after this message. And a word from your local station. <laughs> Thomas Davis, as a high schooler in Shelman, Georgia, he played eight positions. He is multi-talented. He's on the bench right now as the Bulldogs have a second down and six. David Green has Danny Ware with the uh, head wrap behind him. And Ware gets only to the 30-yard line. That'll bring up a third down. Well, this is such a stark contrast to the last time we saw these two teams, which was in Atlanta in December. And, and Georgia seems to have been listening to you. They've been very hard-hitting in this game. Well, I think they've been listening to themselves all through the summer. I mean, they had this game circled because they were dominated by LSU in Atlanta physically. And that's not happening today. They have taken the game right to this physical LSU team. And I think from an offensive line standpoint, they've had the upper hand on this LSU defense so far in the first half. Trying to capitalize on the first turnover of the ball game. It's third down and five. Green under Ross Tenner. Here comes the blitz. Green drills it right side. He's got Brown. First down at the 21-yard line. And again, good blitz pickup in the backfield. Well, sometimes you can't block all of them. I mean, sometimes they're going to bring one more than you can block. And so the key is for Georgia is to try to block all the inside guys. And if you turn somebody loose, make sure he comes from outside, okay? Block all the inside rushers, and if you turn anyone loose, make sure he's the outside guy. Now, Danny Ware that time maybe should have picked up Jesse Daniels and let the one more outside pick him. But David Green did a nice job of throwing, knowing he was going to get hit because they couldn't block everybody. Yeah, he got jolted. Here's Ware with the handoff going left. Breaks a tackle. He's inside the 10, running very hard. See, they didn't have this last year. They did not have a running back who ran this physically and this tough all through the season. And already, as a young freshman, this guy has added a new dimension to this Georgia offense. They had it a couple years ago with Musa Smith. He was a physical big back. Danny Ware looks very much like Musa Smith to me. David Green telling us yesterday, the thing I like the most about Danny Ware is he breaks tackles. Another first down, first and goal. That's Sean Bailey in motion. They'll try Ware again, and he uh, moves it down to the seven-yard line. Went over the block of Max Gene Gillis, who uh, in our conversation yesterday, we were talking about rotating backs. He said, I, I just prefer somebody who's really physical back there. Yeah, well, what would you expect a guy who's 6'5", 350 pounds to say? I mean, he's a <laughs> physical player, and he's going to want a guy that, that breaks tackles and gets his nose bloody in there as well. And uh, Danny Ware has been that. Now, I mentioned the two wideouts. Another guy to keep an eye on in the red zone for Georgia is this guy right here, Leonard Pope, the tight end. He's a six foot seven target, a tough guy to match up with inside. Second down, Ware going left. Down to the two yard line. It's going to bring up a third and goal from the two. Nick Saban, Will Muschamp trying to find an answer to the question of how do you stop Georgia? Well, and a big play right here because if Georgia can stick it in the end zone and build a 17 to nothing lead, that really puts pressure on either Marcus Randall or Jamarcus Russell and Jimbo Fisher, the LSU offensive coordinator. A touchdown would be huge right here for Georgia as opposed to a field goal. 
Gibson's the outside man. Where is a running back? He's began bleeding again. Here's Green going in the end zone for Gibson. He's got it. Touchdown, Georgia. Might be the end of the drought for Fred Gibson. Well, this is what you expect from your senior wide receivers. Both touchdowns have come against Travis Daniels, not Corey Webster. They went at him again, a perfectly thrown ball by David Green, impossible to defend by Daniels. Andy Bailey for the extra point. Nice hold by Lee Jackson. Elvis. Thank you very much. Heartbreak Hotel for the LSU Tigers. Can't stop loving you if you're Fred Gibson and the Georgia Bulldogs. 17 to zip. Early second quarter. Thus far, we've seen an overwhelmingly dominant performance by the Georgia Bulldogs. That one capitalizing on the fumble recovery. They go 35 yards in seven plays. Gibson gets his first touchdown of the year. You know, sometimes you wonder if a week off is good for a team. I think the week off for Georgia has been very beneficial. They look sharp. Brandon Katu nails this one. Carter takes it and thinks about it. Then uh, Joseph Adai urges him to take the touchback. I want you to look at the touchdown. Now, this time, Thomas Brown is in the game. He's going to come this way and block. The line's all going to block this way, and they pick up everybody. LSU brings pressure, but everybody gets picked up. The line does their job. The backs do their job, and Gibson does his job. That was well executed. First of all, picking up the pressure, and then David Green putting the ball in a perfect spot. And Corey Webster was not on the field on that critical third down play. He's their best cover guy. Marcus Randall still in a quarterback for LSU. Nick Saban has not made the change yet. One first down so far for LSU in the ballgame. Here's Randall. Play fake. Under pressure. Fires it right side. A one hopper incomplete for Dwayne Bow. Get complete coverage from all of today's games and read Dennis Dodd's take on the hottest topics in college football. It's all at CBSSportsLine.com. Second and ten. And Danny Ware was taken into the locker room. Uh, profuse bleeding mm. from uh, that, uh, that wound on the head. First three possessions, a punt, a punt, and a fumble. Broussard out of the backfield. They hand it off to the fullback, and this is the freshman, Jacob Hester. There's another fumble. A scramble. And a Georgia recovery. Odell Thurman. Probably the best running play we've seen from LSU today. They mixed him up with a little misdirection to the fullback. And they turn it over at the end. Hester with a nice cutback. He's got the ball protected pretty well. He goes down. It's just a hard tackle by Thomas Davis again. I mean, he just separated Hester from the football. Thomas Davis is an explosive tackler. He gets in great football position and drives right through the man. Thomas Brown on in place of Danny Ware. Play fake. Green wants to go deep. Settles short. Incomplete. Brown was in the neighborhood. Good pressure by LSU because they, they kind of knew David Green wanted to go for a touchdown right there. They went play action, tried to go deep, and it was only a four-man rush, and they got to David Green and forced him to get rid of it. There's Derek Dooley. You talk about a guy who's got a history with these schools. His dad, of course, the longtime athletic director and head coach at Georgia, Derek Dooley, is the running backs coach for Louisiana State. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of guys who have Georgia backgrounds on that uh, bench at LSU. Here's second down. And a broken tackle. Brown down to the 31-yard line. That's going to be close for a first down. Now that game uh, taking place about an hour and a half from here. Third down and one. Backs in the eye. Two fullbacks. And the handoff goes to one of them. This is Des Williams, number 35. And it would appear they're going to move the chain. Let's see if it's indicated or if they want to bring the chain out. 
In both of the games last year, the one in Baton Rouge and in Atlanta, LSU had a turnover edge, a 3-2 to two edge in turnovers. So far today, they're down 2-zip to Georgia, who is looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. And I, why not? You've got the momentum. Your offensive line has been doing a great job. you got to knock them off the ball, and you got to get six inches here. Brown will be the deep back. Thomas and Williams are the fullbacks. The handoff goes to Brown. Second yes, effort. Got it. Yep, he didn't have it at first. A little surprised to see them hand it off so deep to the I formation when they only needed less than a yard. But the second effort by the freshman, Thomas Brown, got the first down. Watch, he's going to get hit behind the line of scrimmage. There's contact, and if he goes down, he doesn't get the first down. Kyle Williams met him behind the line of scrimmage, but he kept those legs going, and the second effort got it. From the spread on first and ten, three wideouts in the game, and Brown is a running back. LSU does not blitz. Green with time goes deep again for Brown, and Brown has a touchdown. Wow, what a catch that was. Here comes David Green. He'll be the first to reach Reggie Brown. He said we need to connect on the outside. Yep. Those guys need to make plays, and they are doing it. And they're doing it all, unfortunately, for him against Travis Daniels, the other cornerback for LSU. That's from 29. Here's Bailey with the extra point. Knocks it home. The LSU is going to do what they do. They're going to pressure and they're going to play man to man. They have great confidence in their corners. But Reggie Brown has played huge today for Georgia. Another perfect throw by David Green over the outside shoulder. You cannot defend that. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. David Pollock being on the kickoff return team. All four starting defensive backs for Georgia are on this kickoff coverage team running down to cover this kick with a 24 to nothing lead. Now you see what LSU must attempt to overcome. They trail by 24 on the road against a team that has not lost its last 16 games in this stadium. And Brandon Katu nails it. Let's go back to the touchdown. I want you to watch two things. The first thing is, here's the matchup, and Reggie Brown is going to beat Daniels. But watch David Green with his eyes hold this free safety on that side of the field. The only guy that could possibly come over and disrupt this play is the safety. Green held him there with his eyes and then made a perfect throw in the corner. Mm. Total yards, 209 to 26. Daniels on the bench, and Jamarcus Russell out of Mobile, Alabama, is the new quarterback. He brings a certain level of excitement. We'll see what he can accomplish here. And he can flat out throw it. I mean, he is clearly the best thrower of the two quarterbacks. He'll hand it off on first down. And a game tackle by the Bulldogs. There's Thomas Davis, number 10. Jamarcus Russell sat out last year, listed at 6'5", 236. We've heard some of his receivers complain that their hands hurt when they try and catch, catch the ball. Yeah, he can really throw, and he's a good athlete, too. I mean, he's not known for his running, but he's he can run the football if he needs to. And You know, the, the problem for him right now is he's got to kind of play like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. He can't go in as a young guy and think he's got to do it all right away. I mean, he's got to make his reads and make his throws, but he, he's got to go play by play. Down 24. Here's Russell. He's got it. Nailed Odell Thurman. Danny Ware headed to the locker room about five minutes ago. Let's get an update from Tracy. That is right, Vern. Danny Ware is still in the locker room. He is being treated for a facial laceration over the right eye. He is expected to return now. Okay. Thank you, Trace. Danny Ware, the 212-pound freshman. And after the sack... It's third and 17 at the 14. Uh, the third sack of the day for Georgia. They don't blitz much. They've blitzed six times today. Three of them have resulted in sacks. Out of the spread, Jamarcus Russell. Georgia will bring four. Here comes David Pollock. 
And he hits him as he lets it go. It's incomplete. That was Pollock in the face of. Well, David Pollock, he knows it's pass. He's not playing run at all, and he just destroys Nate Living's, the right tackle, and gets to the quarterback. Darius Swain also there with pressure. When it's third and 17, you just pin your ears back and go. There's his mother. From nearby Snellville, Georgia. Well-documented story. There's the punt. High. Fair catch. Call for and taken at the 47-yard line by Tim Jennings. 24-0. We still have eight minutes to go in the first half. All right, thank you, Tim. We are back at Sanford Stadium where it has been all Georgia. They're up 24-0. And a nice sight to see in the offensive backfield. Tony Milton, the junior out of uh, Tallahassee who missed almost all of last year with lower leg surgery been a long road back and he's on the field for the first time in the 2004 season play fake green being chased lets it go yeah, good decision outside the tackle box you can throw that away and not get intentional grounding good pressure that time on the inside by Claude Roten no sense forcing anything right now for Georgia I mean everything is is clicking you look at their first five possessions They've already scored 24 points. They only had 13 in their last game at home here against Marshall. A lot of people wondering, what's wrong with the offense? This doesn't look like a third-ranked team. It does today. There's Tony Milton, his first carry since early last year. Well, Tony Melton, and it is time now for the always much-anticipated Affleck. Here's the question. Who was the last true freshman before Danny Ware? To start the first game at tailback for Georgia. The last true freshman. Boy, I can see people thinking that's yeah, too easy. That's right. It's not as easy as you think it might not be. Not quite. <laughs> we don't want you to duck this one. Third and seven. Green out of the gun. Here's David Green. He's got Reggie Brown, and Brown cannot hang on. That's the only thing he's been unable to do today. Well, they tried to stick it in between the two zone defenders. It was a little bit low, but that's one Reggie probably wishes he had another shot at. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way today except that one. Well, Reggie Brown in his final season here. Had kind of a, I don't know if you'd say a disappointing career at Georgia, but not as flashy as many thought when he signed on here. And boy, he has excelled today. It's fourth and seven, and Gordon Ely Kelso punt for the second time. Skyler Green awaits it at the 10 yard line. Nice high, deep. But it goes into the end zone. It'll come back to the 20 yard line. What a contrast for Nick Saban's bunch. As Georgia has dominated, they are up by 24. Sanford Stadium takes on almost a biblical look. The Red Sea here with 92,000. Reminds me of Lincoln, Nebraska. That's what it looks like out there, too. <laughs> First and 10. Here's the handoff. Joseph Adai, number 10, who has uh, been used this year primarily as a third down back and a pass receiving specialist, gets the handoff. Well, Georgia undefeated. Welcoming the national champions, the defending co-champions, the Tigers of LSU. They have the band here, but they haven't been able to play hold that Tiger much uh, this afternoon. A formidable task now 
to come into Sanford Stadium. You can see how well over the years Georgia has done against defending national champions. There's the receiver slipping and falling down. And let's go down to the sideline. Tracy Wolfson with today's Sonic Moment. Vern, Georgia open up their 19 season against the defending national champions, Clemson Tigers. Clemson scored first as QB Homer Jordan took it in from five yards out, but it was all Georgia from there. The Dogs would get their first touchdown of the game on this block punt to tie the score. And Kevin Butler added a pair of field goals to put Georgia ahead for good. A couple of late interceptions sealed the victory as Georgia won 13-7. Todd, you know that 1982 Georgia team well, don't you? Yeah, we met them a little bit later in the season. That was uh, Labor Day night, and we met them uh, January 1st down in New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl. Here's Russell, chased by Pollock. Goes right, points deep, sends it way up in the air for Skyler Green, tipped away incomplete. That was Trey Battle, number 25, a one-time walk-on on this team. Well, you just cannot get over how dominant of an effort this has been by Georgia in the first half. David Pollock down a little bit. LSU, one first down in the ballgame. He's going to get blocked by Livings and chipped by Joseph Adai. That's what you do on a great pass rusher. You have your running back chip on his way out. And uh, he put a pretty good shot on David Pollock. Pollock still in the crouch. Hard to, hard to imagine unless you're around this university, but he has taken on cult-like status oh. almost equal to that of Herschel Walker. Listen to this. He is a much beloved player, in part because he thought about going into the NFL, thought long and hard about it. He is David Green's roommate. Green said, I gave him room when he came home to think about it. Didn't try and talk him into coming back. David Pollock said he did because he didn't want to give up his senior year. He could play 10 years in the NFL and never get his final year back. Jackson, high, short, fair catch. Jennings at the 47-yard line. Is Vanuatu? I mean, I'm sure you. No, probably... no, no. We missed that one. You have. Yeah. You and Nancy go to some exotic places. <laughs> Never been to Vanuatu. Huh? I think it's in uh, the South Pacific. Here's Green. Avoids the sack. Can't avoid the sack. Kyle Williams got him, number 95. 550. It is. Uh, it's, it's down in the South Pacific. Nice. Hasn't been a. Hasn't been high on our list. <laughs> Second and 19. David Pollock getting a rest on the bench. His first sack for David Green. And remember, the two games last year, LSU sacked Georgia's quarterbacks 10 times. And that's the first sack today. This offensive line and the running backs, I mean, because they're involved in the protection as well, has done a very nice job. Second down and 19. There's a quick one out to Reggie Brown. That's going to pick up just a couple. Back-to-back yeah. -back nice plays by Marcus Spears. I mean, you know, at this point for LSU, they need their leaders, their big-time players, to step up and take things under control. And uh, Marcus Spears back-to-back -back plays that time. Big-time plays. He rushed the passer, and then he defended the screen. Watch Marcus Spears, number 84, read the screen, and then go and get the ball carrier. And that's a great, quick reaction by the senior out of Baton Rouge. Now we talk a lot about David Green and David Pollock for LSU. It was Michael Clayton and Marcus Spears. Mm -hmm. And Michael Clayton, the outstanding wide receiver and a good friend of Marcus Spears, did decide. Here's Thomas Brown out to the 46-yard line. And that will uh, result in a Georgia punt forthcoming. Now David Green for the day. Boy, he got batted around so hard in that uh, championship game. It's been different today. Yeah, good protection, good pockets, and then excellent ball placement. I mean, he has put the ball in places where nobody can defend it. When a quarterback is that accurate where he places the ball against man coverage, the results are great. Three touchdowns for David Green. Six of 11, 70 yards. And now Gordon Ely Kelso on the punt on fourth and 10. Skyler Green at the 10. Ready. 
Skyler Green at the 15. Goes right. Nice block to free him. Flag is down. It was not that nice a block. And the Ely Kelso with the tackle. I thought it was a legit block. I think this one's coming back. Well, I think it might have been another one. I don't know if it was the one that we saw first because the flag came a little bit after the fact. So it might have been another block that they deemed was illegal. There's Ronnie Prude who uh, figured in one of the more controversial plays this year. It was Ronnie Prude. The new rule. Here's uh, Steve Landis. Illegal block in the back during the return. Number 18 on the return team. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, it wasn't on the uh, the guy that we saw down by Skyler Green. It was somewhere else. First yep. On Hester, the guy who also had the the fumble right. earlier in the game, the freshman fullback. So that wipes out a 35-yard punt return. Jacob Hester is back on the field. Here comes Jamarcus Russell. Just one of the, go ahead. I was just going to say, one of the things that's really hurt LSU in this game also is average starting field position. I mean, Georgia, seven possessions. They've started at their own 46. LSU has started at their own 20 for their last four possessions. It's hard to go against a good defense when you have the long field to work against. Here's the toss sweep. And Allie Broussard is driven out of bounds by Greg Blue, number 17. That was the same problem they had in Auburn a couple weeks ago was bad starting field position. They averaged starting on their own 17 for the game. They had 11 offensive possessions and their average starting field position was their own 17 against you know, a good defense. That's tough. They lost that game by one point. I mentioned the Ronnie Prude play when there was a missed extra point and it looked like uh, Auburn was not going to take the lead and Ronnie Prude signaled for Infraction on a new rule. Here's Broussard coming wide to the left side after the 34 yard line. But LSU last year taught in going in going 13-1, uh, and 1, they were 5-0 and 0 on the road. They yeah. really were a good road team. Now this is their second road trip and they're in deep trouble. Well, and they played so well last week against an undermanned Mississippi State team. They won 51 to nothing, and Nick Saban said, okay, now we did a lot of good things. And we played well, but can we play with that same kind of consistency, that same kind of toughness, and do it on the road? Well, they haven't been able to do it here today so far. Broussard rips it out across the 45. That'll move the chain. That's a gain of 12 as Quentin Moses makes the tackle. Six for 30 for Ali Broussard. And time now for the Home Depot coach's decision. And it is the decision to uh, rotate the uh, tailback. Yeah, well, they rotate quarterbacks. They rotate tailbacks. A little bit of different. Justin Vincent, more of a speed, make you miss guy. Ali Broussard, a downhill, run over you type of guy who's played very well the last three weeks. There's Thomas Davis coming up on run blitz. And that's Thomas Davis who pushes Jacob Hester to the south. <laughs> Yes, he does. I mean, when he when he shows up, the ball carry usually stops. Quentin Moses is also a part of it. Thomas Davis is a great story about Brian Van Gorder went out to watch Thomas Davis when he was a high school. He was not highly recruited. And Brian Van Gorder watched him play basketball and said he's a great athlete. I want him on this team. And he got the scholarship to come to Georgia. Here's the toss sweep to Joseph Adai. And Adai breaks loose down the sidelines, breaks a tackle, spins, and finally is dumped at the 18-yard line. This is a great call by Jimbo Fisher because they caught a toss sweep away from the blitz. Again, Georgia doesn't blitz much, but the blitz is coming this way, and the sweep is going to go this way for LSU. So they called it right. They expected the blitz from the other side, and they tossed the ball away from the blitz. And then a couple broken tackles have to tack on yardage at the end. But uh, a big play for Joseph Adai and LSU. Timely as well. Longest play of the day for LSU. And here's the handoff. There's Thomas Davis again with Odell Thurman's help. Ali Broussard doesn't get anything. 128 remaining in the first half. LSU has all three of their timeouts. It looks like they uh, might be using one right here. Very important for them to get in the end zone here and cut into this Georgia lead before halftime. 
They use one of the three. Second and nine at the 18 when we return. Significant possession for the Tigers. One twenty-nine to go before the break. 24 nothing, but LSU with its most serious threat of the first half. A reminder that the Earthlink halftime report will go back to New York, Tim, with scores and highlights from around the country. Saw that Army had that 17-0 yeah. lead at TCU, trying to break a long, long losing streak. And Foreign Frogs came back to win at 21-17. The other two academies had a great game the other night. Navy beating Air Force on a last-second field goal. Here are the Tigers, Jamarcus Russell at quarterback. Second down and nine from the 18. 62 yards on this drive so far for LSU. Only 23 yards in their first six possessions. Play fake. Russell down the middle for Burrow. Got it. Touchdown. And well he done. hands it quickly to Greg Blue. Yeah, well done. Oh. Well done by Jamarcus Russell with the touch pass. A lot of times a young quarterback with a strong arm doesn't know how to put the right kind of touch on a pass to get it over a linebacker. But this is a beautiful throw. Bo runs the post route. He's a tall receiver. Put it up in the air for him. And an easy touchdown for LSU. Jackson for the extra point. Inside the right, upright. Nothing comes easy for LSU when it comes to point afters, but a most significant step back into this ball game. Jamarcus Russell, Dwayne Bowe, four to 80, results in seven. 123 to go in the first half, 24-7 after that most impressive drive. Dwayne Bowe, his fifth touchdown catch of the season. And the kickoff forthcoming, it'll be Brian McClendon and Tyson Browning deep. Here's Chris Jackson with the kick. And Browning will grab this at the four-yard line. Browning, who has uh, lost his place in the depth chart, he's now listed as the number four running back, despite having started a couple of games. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Well, I think it was a mistake by the Georgia defense. This is only one receiver for LSU. These two guys are tight ends, and I think Georgia was thinking run, and nobody really covered Dwayne Bowe as he went to the end zone. They're thinking run on second and nine, and uh, all alone is the leading receiver for LSU, Dwayne Bowe, in the end zone. That was, that was pretty easy for LSU for a day that nothing has come easily for him offensively. That one was easy. Touchdown number five for the sophomore from Miami. Danny Ware is back on the field, the true freshman who uh, had that uh, wound over his eye, heavily taped, and he's back on there. Here comes the blitz. And the gang tackle on Danny Ware. And it's time now to answer the Affleck trivia question of the day. Who was the last true freshman before Danny Ware to start the first game at Dale back for Georgia? All of you who said Herschel Walker, take a step to the back of the line. Rabbit Smith, 1943. Herschel Walker came on in the second quarter of his first game. Rabbit Smith, tailback, 43 to 46. He was a second team All SEC in 43. A good one. And he's the answer to what? Yeah, I can't do it as well as you can. He did all right. Yeah, it was kind of weak. Seventeen seconds to go before halftime. Just a guess, Todd. Mark Rick is not going to be real thrilled with his team when they go to break. Well, for the third straight possession now, three and out, and they've got to find a way to recapture that intensity that they started the game with because uh, if we learned anything today. Florida had a 35 to 7 lead over Arkansas in the swamp in the first half and uh, had to fight to win at the end. Uh, Eli Kelso, 10-man front for LSU. Skyler Green awaits the punt at the 35-yard line. On fourth down with 17 seconds to go. High, very short. Very, very short. Ineffective. Yeah, and with the arm of Jamarcus Russell, he'll have the ability to throw this ball to the end zone a couple times. We have the uh, Georgia coaching staff in the booth next to us. And I could hear them throwing things just yeah. now. Yeah, they weren't happy because uh, all they needed there was just a good solid kick. And as it is now, LSU on the 37-yard line. 19-yard punt. 
Florida won today. Ole Miss defeats Arkansas State. South Carolina, Alabama. What a weekend in the SEC in Auburn and Tennessee and a big one in Knoxville tonight. First and ten, Tigers. Chris Jackson, their field goal kicker, has a strong leg. Russell down the sidelines. That's caught at the 14-yard line. Beautiful throw and catch. Craig Davis, number three. Craig Davis coming in was the second leading receiver, has done a nice job playing in the slot when Skyler Green was absent. Now he's outside and does a nice job catching it on the sideline. And right now, LSU, as a field goal here, can make it a two-score game. They could cut it to a 14-point lead at halftime. Only five seconds remaining. Jackson on for the season. He is 2 of 4. This is from 31 yards out. Just does get it inside the right upright. And look at Marcus Spears sprinting off the field, jumping up in the air, a shift in momentum in this football game right at halftime as LSU and Georgia run to the locker room. This is not something you normally see in college football, a team down by 14 celebrating at the break. Jackson cut it in. Chris Jackson's 31-yard field goal has narrowed the margin to 24 to 10. Let's go down to Tracy, who's with Nick Saban. Thanks, Vern. Coach, you finally found the end zone. How do you keep it going into the second half? Well, you know, I, I didn't think our players played with any kind of their own character, so to speak, in the beginning of the game. We were out in the sorts on offense and on defense, and Georgia's players did a good job of taking advantage of it. We turned the ball over, but we settled down here in the last half of that quarter, and hopefully we'll be able to bring that out in the second half. Are you going to stick with Jamarcus Russell in the second half? I think we'll start with him and go from there. Great. Thanks a lot. Good luck in that second half. Back to you. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson, who's with Mark Rick. Thanks, Vern. Coach, you're up 24-10, but you ended the half with three straight three and outs. How do you recapture that intensity that you started the game with? Well, that's exactly what we've got to do. we just got to get our energy level up and get ready to go. You know, the last one, we played it pretty conservative, thinking we could get the clock down. We tried to angle kick for no return, but we just gave it. We just we just wasn't a, won a very good kick, and that hurt us right there. But, uh, you know, they're a pretty good football team, too. We just got to get back to uh, the same energy level as we started the game. Thanks a lot, Coach. Right. Vern, back to you. Thank you, Tracy. 92,000, most of whom are dressed in red. We got a smattering of purple and gold, and they're pretty happy right now, despite the fact that they trail a six by 14. <laughs> Fellow's got a slightly obstructed view. <laughs> we are between the hedges and Sanford Stadium. Georgia leading 24-10. LSU won the toss to open the game, elected to defer the option. Thus, they will receive the ball as we open the third quarter. Xavier Carter, the speedy freshman, in anticipation of a chance to return the kick. Here's Katu, and Carter grabs it at the one. Heads to his right, and is nailed as he gets down to the 12-yard line. Keelan Johnson, number 30, a freshman out of Daytona Beach. Well, Mark Rick told Tracy that Georgia needs to recapture that energy, that intensity. No better way to do it than a big hit on special teams right away. Well, let's go back, Todd. At the beginning of the broadcast, you talked about things each team must yeah. accomplish. Have they changed? No, I don't think so. I think now Georgia, the, the biggest thing is get that intensity back. For LSU, their number one thing now, they can't turn it over again. Those two turnovers in the first half for LSU both led to Georgia touchdowns, and therefore we have a 14-point difference in the game right now. And Jamarcus Russell will open a quarterback, as Nick Saban indicated. And here is the handoff to start the second half. Ali Broussard, number 22. And let's take a look at the halftime statistics presented by the Hartford. Yeah, a couple of things that stand out, the rushing yardage, Georgia running the football well, and then those two turnovers for LSU again. They both led to Georgia touchdowns. LSU had four turnovers last week in the win, the big win over Mississippi State. And Nick Saban said, well, you know, we'll sacrifice the turnovers for the intensity that we got, but they can't afford that anymore in this game. They've got to protect the football in the second half. Second and six. Bo starts in motion. And there is a nice tackle by Will Thompson, number 58, who had to sit out all of last season. 
with a dislocated ankle, and his presence back has helped free up David Pollock on the other side. Yeah, here's Thompson right here, doing his job on the backside, reading the run, and then keeping good position, good leverage to make the play behind the line of scrimmage. Third and seven. LSU was 0 for 4 on third downs in that first half. And this is a tough one here. Third and seven inside their own 20-yard 20, 20 line. They'll send two men wide right. Chris Davis, Craig Davis, rather, is wide to the left. Four-man rush. Here comes Pollock. Little screen pass. Joseph Adai. And he's got extra yardage. And here goes Adai. Caught from behind at the 46 by Thomas Davis. Yeah, excellent play call by Jimbo Fisher. Georgia just rushed four. They didn't blitz. It was a zone defense, and the screen set up beautifully for LSU. Watch the screen set up. Only a four-man rush, and Odell Thurman is going to get blocked right there. That's the guy that they got out of the play in order to free up a dive for the screen. Thurman was in the middle, responsible for the back, but he got blocked and couldn't make the play. Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator for LSU. Yeah, he's way, way down there on the end. Here's Broussard. Odell Thurman gets him. Well, that was a touchdown saving tackle yes, it was. by Thomas Davis. 10 on 10. And Thurman makes a big play here. Second and 11. Take a look at this play again now. Odell Thurman, who got caught up in the uh, traffic there on the screen play. That time ran free to the ball carrier and made the nice stop. LSU will go from the spread. Joseph Adai is in the backfield. And five men come. Here's Jamarcus Russell. Finds his receiver, Dwayne Bow. And this time out on the perimeter, the tackle is made short of the first down. You know, we've talked so much about Justin Vincent and Ali Broussard in the backfield for LSU, but Joseph Adai today really giving some good spark to this LSU offense. He's in there a lot on third down because he's a better pass blocker and he's a good receiver out of the backfield. And another third down situation for LSU, but this is the first one that is for less than seven yards to convert. So an easier opportunity this time for Jamarcus Russell. From the 40, third and four, trailing by 14. Blitz threatened. Blue pulls up. Here comes the blitz. Russell avoids it. Gets a downfield block. And he's got a first down just inside the 35. And again, they're throwing things in the Georgia coaches booth next to our broadcast location. Yeah, again, one, one time, sometimes when you blitz, one problem can be a quarterback running. The blitz is going to come here. And Jamarcus Russell is just going to take off right inside there. When everybody comes to, to rush the quarterback, even if they're unblocked like Trey Battle was that time, the quarterback has some room in the middle of the field. Russell on in relief of Marcus Randall. He's hit four of seven. And you pointed out when he came into the game, he can run. Yep. First and ten. Play fake. Russell. Look Tried for the screen, screen pass. Again, Absolutely. Yep. Here's going to be a holding call. They tried to set the screen with Broussard, but a fine job by Kendrick Golston of uh, diagnosing a uh, diag. That's right. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> you can call it I, diagnosing, I, sure. I, 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 the doctor of defense. Oh, uh, dear. I got halfway through that word and thought <laughs> that doesn't work. Well, penalty. Here's Steve Landis. <laughs> uh, it's not easy to deal with senility. Holding on the offense, number 76, 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. That's the all-conference performer at left tackle, Andrew Whitworth. First and 10 at the 44. Well, you know, the penalty happens because the screen didn't develop. I mean, if, it, if they run the screen like normal, then it, it's probably okay. But Whitworth with the hold on Quentin Moses, the screen was not there because of Kedrick Golston with his diagnosis. <laughs> And the result is a penalty on LSU. First and 20. Four down for Georgia. Russell, quick setup, throws it, caught. They get the 10 back. 
It's going to be uh, marked at the 35-yard line. You know, we saw uh, Eric Ainge and Brent Schaefer, the, the young quarterbacks at Tennessee in the big game against Florida, and their poise. I'm impressed with the poise of Jamarcus Russell right now. I think in watching him on tape, he looks better today than he's looked all season. He's very poised out there. He came into this game down 24 to nothing, and he didn't panic. He didn't feel like he had to make a big play on his first throw. He's played very well under control, and he's given this team a little bit of a spark. Second and 10 at the 35. LSU opening drive of the third quarter. This is the eighth play of the drive. Here comes Greg Blue. They hand it to a die, and the pocket collapses, and Greg Blue, number 17, was among the first to get there. Yeah, Blue and Pollock. Right. <laughs> I mean, they were both coming from the backside, and they got there quickly. David Pollock, not a very big defensive end, but great closing speed. And he's there to wrap up. As soon as the die slowed down, uh, he had nowhere to go with Paulus Jason. Early Doucette, true freshman, number nine, is on the field. He comes to the near side of being the slot. Dwayne Bowe is the outside receiver. Here's your basic significant play in a ball game. And Third Bowe's, and Bowe's working on a freshman quarterback, Paul Oliver. Here comes the rush, and there goes Russell. Trey Battle, number 25, the one-time walk-on. Yeah. High school quarterback. Trey Battle came unblocked from the outside to safety. Here he is right here. He's going to come off the edge and just chase down the big Jamarcus Russell. He, Russell's a lot bigger than Trey Battle is, but he didn't give up on it. He drug him down to the ground for a big-time sack. Chris Jackson on to punt. Battle... Gets a moment to rest. And Tim Jennings is going to call timeout. I don't think they had either enough people on the field or the proper people. You're right. On the they field. only have 10 on the field right now. They need one more guy. Tim Jennings did his count, turned around and said, We need a timeout. 909 to go, third quarter. 24-10, you hate to burn timeouts early in the half, but watch, Georgia, if you look at their guys, and then the returners back here, only 10 guys on the field. They had to call timeout to get Demario Minter on the field, the 11th defender. Here's Chris Jackson with the punt, and Jennings calls for the fair catch, takes it, good field position now defensively for LSU, a 39-yard punt for Jackson, very effective. How about the gauntlet LSU has at Georgia today, at Florida next week? Two tough Eastern opponents. Here's Green, and it's batted down. That is a familiar sight. Marcus Spears, we saw at least seven deflections at the line of scrimmage by LSU's defense in the conference title game. Yeah, a short drop. Marcus Spears, who's already tall, he didn't rush the passer. He stopped, timed his jump, read the quarterback's eyes, and went up and got his hands on it. He's six foot four, former basketball player, did a nice job at elevating there. Had a touchdown interception return last week against Mississippi State. 35 yards, second down and 10. Green. Fred Gibson comes near side. Green with a play fake. He goes deep for his tight end. It's caught by Montrez Milner. Big play. Big play is right because LSU was feeling it right there. They were feeling like they were going to pin Georgia down deep. They were going to bring some pressure. And they got the tight end going against the safety. Here's Milner. He's going to go on the corner route against Jesse Daniels, the strong safety. And it's another perfectly placed football by David Green. Got it up in the air quickly over the outside shoulder. And a big first down for the Bulldogs. Danny Ware doing the job again, picking up the blitz. Martrez Milner's third catch of the year. And a big one of 27 yards. Now Gibson starts in motion. Here's a play fake again out of the backfield. Too high. Des Williams, the intended receiver. <laughs> That's a large <laughs> collection of flies, Tim. Do you think Timmy has a Spencer doll that he puts in there that he can talk to? When Spencer's when, when working Spencer's games. Working game. <laughs> Here's Danny Ware out to the 38-yard line. Let's spend a moment with Tracy Wolf. Thanks, Kern. Well, David Green needs a win today to tie the Georgia record for most minute wins by a quarterback. I spoke to David yesterday, and he said that mark would mean more to him than anything. He says it means more to me than 
touchdowns or completions. He says, you play the game to win. If there's a way I'd want to be remembered as a quarterback, it would be that I know how to win and found a way to win no matter how good or bad I played. Thank you, Tracy. He's also chasing Peyton Manning's all-time NCAA mark set of Tennessee. He's only four back of that screen pass. Marcus Spears is just disrupting things for Georgia. I mean, he's knocking down passes. He's getting his big body in the way of throws and forcing David Green to throw over his head. And uh, Georgia has to punt the football again. Well, here is the list. Peyton Manning sent it to Tennessee. 39 victories. Rick Leach, Ken Dorsey, Cher second. John Roush is currently fourth. David Green and Jay Barker had uh, 35 wins along with Crouch, McNabb, and Healy. But uh, it's David, quite a record. Yes, it is. Yeah, it really is. I mean, that is. He's right. As a quarterback, that is the record that means the most to you. And that's the stat that that uh, that you remember the most. Winning football games. Healy Kelso just before the half. A 19-yard punt that helps set up the field goal. Here is his punt. And Skyler Green, this one's not particularly effective either. He fair and caught he fair it. caught it. Yes, he did. <laughs> Skyler's a little rusty. He hasn't uh, played much here the last couple weeks. And a little embarrassed, I would think, right about now. I got it, I got it, I got it. I want to run. Uh. Stanford Stadium, LSU with the ball. Legal fair catch called. And even though his instincts told him to run, he pulled up. There's no penalty. So a first down now, and the crowd getting back into it after the urging of David Pollock and friends. Here's a fake toss to Marcus Russell. Goes right. He's taken by Will Thompson. Now he throws it up for grabs. He was outside of the tackle box, so he can throw that away. Now, this doesn't look good for LSU because I think that's Ben Wilkerson, their All-American type center, who is down in obvious pain. He is a key, key component to this LSU football team. David Pollock said about Ben Wilkerson yesterday to us, he's the best center I've seen in four years of college football. Brian Van Gorder said the same thing. He said he's the best that he's seen. Dan Wilkerson from Hemp Hill, Texas. Looks like a knee. Oh, he's the center and he's pulling out to the left on the bootleg and he just kind of goes down. It looked like his right leg kind of went out on him there as he was uh, as he was engaged with David Pollock. Tripped over one of his own guys a little bit. Now over on the sideline, uh, you know, you, you're concerned about Wilkerson, but it's very important for Jamarcus Russell to get some snaps right now from his backup center. And it looks like they're going to move Niswanger into the center spot and maybe bring a new guard in. So instead of going with a Doug Planchard, they're going to go with Ryan Niswanger as the center and bring a new guard into the game. One more time. There you see Hester trying to get out of the backfield. He kind of kicked into Ben Wilkerson as he's being helped off to the field. As it is, second and ten when we come back for LSU. Georgia and LSU meeting for the 25th time. 24-10 in the third quarter. Ben Wilkerson has given way now because of the injury to Rudy Niswanger. He moves over from right guard to center. And Brian Johnson is in at the right guard. Here's the toss to Skyler Green out of an attempted tackle of Tim Jennings. And he's out to the 32-yard line. That's going to leave LSU with a third down. Oh, my goodness, Tim. Pretty good impression of Bob Huffer. Tracy Wolfson, all alma mater, 35 to 7. So the biggest smile on the sideline is uh, that of Tracy right now. Third down, here's Russell. Little slant play. That uh, might be good for the. Oh, it's incomplete. Incomplete. Thomas Davis and Demario Minner immediately looked over and said, uh -uh. 
Well, this was a good throw. It was a good effort by Skyler Green, but an even better effort by Tim Jennings to just not stop fighting. He just ripped that ball out. There, the ball hit the ground. A good call. And credit Tim Jennings, credit Tim, Jim, Tim Jennings for just staying with the play and ripping it out. And uh, no more stopping and throwing stuff next door. That's good for us. Yeah. That's really good for us. It is fourth down, not third. I beg your pardon. Fourth and three. And Chris Jackson is on. Tim Jennings. First afternoon of returning punts. Tyson Browning had been doing that, but he had five fumbles in the first four, three games of the year. This one fairly short. Jennings comes up. Oh, got a bit of uh, good fortune there yeah, as he scary. muffed it. You know, the problem, I mean, Tyson Browning's leading the SEC in punt returning, but you mentioned the five fumbles. So they're, they're stuck a little bit. Tyson has given him some good returns, but not dependable with his hands. And for a new guy, you know, that's just following the ball, the wind, guys running down at you, and you got to concentrate on catching it first, no matter what. There was a flag on the play. It's a legal procedure, so the option resting. I think George is going to decline it. Here's Steve Landis. There weren't enough men on the line on the kicking team. That penalty is declined. First down. Normally, you might say, well, let's make them kick again. Let's make them run down and cover again. Let's try to get better field position. But when you're not really sure how good your return guys are, you say, no, let's just take the ball right here on the 29 and go on offense. Nick Saban, Mark Richt. We've got something brewing here in Athens, Georgia. It's 24-10, midway through the third quarter. Welcome back, Georgia, up 24-10. We saw LSU center Ben Wilkerson go down in that last series. He has a strain ligament in his left knee. He's had it before right now. He's stretching on the sidelines. They said he will most, li most likely be back in. Well, that is good news for uh, LSU. Georgia now trying to find an offensive spark that has, has left them. Yeah. Here comes the blitz. David Green back. Goes deep. He's got a man. Gibson. They went after Corey Webster this time. They've been picking on Travis Daniels. And this time they went right at the best cover guy, Corey Webster. And Freddie Gibson ran by him and made the catch. Here's Gibson working up here on Webster. Another perfectly thrown ball against man-to-man -man coverage. One-on-one. -on -one. Throw the ball outside and let Fred Gibson stretch out and get it. Just keep going back to our conversation with David Green. He yep. said, we've got to do something on the outside, and I've got to have good ball placement. That's right, and they've done it. Five plays over 20 yards in the ball game, and this one's close. Danny Ware, LaRon Landry. We take a look at David Green throwing where he's thrown the ball and where he's been effective. Most of it has been outside and deep. Nothing inside here, and I still think before this game's over, his tight end in the middle of the field might have an opportunity for a big play because there's so much concentration on the corners and the outside receivers. I think one of those tight ends might bust something in the middle. First down on that last run by Danny Ware. This is Reggie Brown in motion. Green hands it to Ware, comes around the right side, looks for a block, doesn't get one. And there is uh, Jesse Frant Daniels who did a nice job defensively. He sure did because we've already talked about Danny Ware's ability to break some tackles, his strength. He, he was able to elude one guy, but as he got forced further outside, Jesse Daniels wouldn't let him go. Now here are the last four possessions for the Bulldogs. Punt, 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 punt. Yeah, and only one first down prior to this drive. Now they've got things moving a little bit here in uh, LSU territory. Thomas Brown is in uh, the backfield. He gets the handoff, comes right. And uh, Cameron Vaughn got him number 46 after a modest gain inside the 25-yard line. You know, the other thing, and you brought up the point earlier, when we talked to the LSU coaches, they said, hey, we know what George is going to do. We know what we're going to do. We know what they're going to do. They're going to try to throw it deep at least 10 to 12 times a game. In the championship game, they tried it 12 times. They only hit two. Well, their ratio of success has been much better so far today. Same set now, and out of the spread, here's David Green. He's got two wide receivers to the left side. Sean Bailey is the slot receiver. Gibson to the outside. And Reggie Brown is to the right. They go into the corner for Gibson over Webster. He's got it. Touchdown, Georgia. And Freddie Gibson lulled Corey Webster to sleep on that play. 
What a play by Fred. This was not a blitz. It was only a four-man rush. And Corey Webster was looking at Fred Gibson, and Fred was acting like, you know what, the ball's not coming here. It's not going to come to me. Don't even cover me. He just kind of lulls him to sleep and then accelerates at the end of the football for the touchdown. Extra point up and good. Fred Gibson had that extraordinary freshman season. Young man from Waycross, Georgia. Thought about going to Florida. Settled for Georgia. Played basketball for the Bulldogs. They've been waiting a year and a half for this kind of breakout. No reason to throw anything. Let's just high-five each other. six isn't excited with reason David Green four touchdown passes today and he's averaged nearly 17 yards per completion so much talk in the last couple weeks what's wrong with the Georgia offense what's wrong with David Green what's wrong with Fred Gibson where's that explosive offense you know two years ago when this team went 13 and one they started slow last year they started fast offensively and then they got worn down by the end of the year they're not slow anymore. And this, this offense has looked good today. Mark Rick said it, it's been a, a circumstance of 10 guys getting the play right and one fouling up. Never the same guy, but uh, 10 of 11, and they weren't in sync. That's not the case today. David Green has tied a career high with four touchdown passes, and here's Xavier Carter. Oh, 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 brother! That's a true freshman. You must be kidding! You see, he has to listen to Joseph Adai, too. I mean, the other guy back there has got to tell him what to do. Xavier Carter may be panicking. Joseph Adai right here, number 10. He's saying, stay there, stay there, stay there. And then, boy, a costly mistake for LSU in the kicking game. Adai tells him to stay. Carter waves him off and then touches it down on the one. He's going to have a terrific career at LSU, yes. but for the rest of his life, he'll never forget that play. Quarterback sneak. And uh, let's go back and look at the touchdown again. Yeah, and it was a four-man rush, but man-to-man -man with a free safety. But this inside route of the slot guy keeps the free safety away from Fred Gibson and Corey Webster. The slot receiver is going to kind of occupy the attention of the free safety. David Green puts it outside. Just a perfect place for the football. And again, the acceleration by Fred Gibson. He really fooled Corey Webster on that play. Second and nine from the two. Almost to a man. Every Georgia player we talked to yesterday said when we were in Baton Rouge last year, it was the loudest place we'd ever been. Their crowd was a factor. The Georgia crowd becoming a factor right now. LSU timeout. Xavier Carter trying to shake the memory. It won't work. The only thing Georgia has to be aware of now is don't fall asleep and give up a big play because you're wanting to try to get a safety. Play fake, Russell lobs it deep across the middle. It's tipped. I believe Greg Blue. Yep. Yes, it was Greg Blue. LSU trying to go play action from deep in their own end zone. Good idea. Pretty nice throw by Russell with a little touch, but Blue able to get a hand on it and knock it away. Well, here's a circumstance where the defense begins to salivate. Mm -hmm. Third and nine from the two. You think David Pollock will take this play off? <laughs> I don't think so. Out of the 
the shotgun to Marcus Russell. Here comes the blitz. Russell got it out to Davis. That'll be short of the first down, I believe. Yeah, really a nice tackle by Tim Jennings in the open field. If he doesn't make a sure tackle, Davis might squirm forward for the first down. So a small guy, 5'8", 173 pounds, but a very sure tackle short of the first down. The catch. See, if Jennings doesn't stop him right there, he wiggles forward for the first down. Instead, LSU has to punt from their own end zone. Jennings goes back. He muffed the last one. He's counting. Demario Mitter is on the field this time. All he wants to do is catch this one. Even if he catches it right where he's at, Georgia sets up shop at the 50. Snap back to Jackson. Return is on all the way. And Jennings with a fair catch. Makes the grab at the 42. You know, Tim, I, I, I think Todd would agree. I think Carl Orton right now is the early clubhouse yeah. leader for the Heisman. I think that's true. And it, now that we're in October, it's okay to talk about that. <laughs> I forgot the rules. Yeah, well, that's just okay. Xavier Carter, the freshman, just trying to forget the moment but reliving it at the same time. Isn't that some picture? Yeah, and, and like you said, he will have an excellent career here. But but for LSU today, not just his mistake, a lot of mental mistakes, turnovers, a lack of execution. That was what Nick Saban talked about. Can we do it on the road the way we did it at home last week? Here's Ware going left, stiff arm. LeRon Landry can't stop him and then catches up. And I made this point early in the game. This is a different Georgia offense with Danny Ware. Thomas Brown's a nice looking back. Tyson Browning, Michael Cooper, those guys can do some things. But this guy, Danny Ware, is special. He is a physical back. Hard north and south runner, can block tackles. LeRon Landry's the leading tackler on this team, and he drug him for about eight yards. Georgia went through the entire season a year ago without a runner getting over 100 yards in a game. Danny Ware has now done it twice. He's got 105 yards on 19 carries. He opened his Georgia career with 135. Now, give it back to him. And down to the 21-yard line. Neil Calloway, you saw a picture of Neil. Offensive coordinator, but also the offensive yeah. line coach. And this offensive line, I think, has is, is shown dramatic improvement from a year ago. Now, think about this LSU defense coming in, holding teams to 77 yards per game rushing. They held Carnell Williams to 75 yards in Auburn, Ronnie Brown to 67, well below both of those guys' average. And Danny Ware in this Georgia offense running with great success. Second down. Here's Green out of the gun. Comes the corner blitz. David Green drills it. Got it. Sean Bailey, touchdown. David Green has set a career high of five touchdown passes in a single game. Maybe Kyle Orton's not the early leader <laughs> in the chase for the Heisman. Well, we saw a true freshman make a mistake on the kickoff return. We just saw another true freshman make a mistake on the blitz of a veteran savvy quarterback, David Green. Extra point is up and through. Flag down. Flag on the try. Chivas Jackson, number 21, is a true freshman out of Mobile, Alabama. He is going to blitz from right here, and he's going to come unblocked. But he's going to get so excited that David Green, who's not the most elusive guy, is going to elude him. He's going to step up underneath him because he was out of control and then fire a strike to Sean Bailey for his fifth touchdown of the day. This guy is on today. I mean, he has been beautifully accurate with the football. Well, and you think of the disappointment in the two losses a year ago. Quite a day to celebrate for David Green.
Notice that Xavier Carter is not back there. It was Skylar Green. Well, there are weekends you circle when the schedules come out and you think that's going to be pretty good. This is one of them. Arkansas lost to Florida. That was much closer than that final score as uh, Arkansas fought back. LSU, Georgia, Auburn, and Tennessee tonight. Next Saturday, we will return to Sanford Stadium and welcome the volunteers as they come in to take on the Bulldogs. High formation. Here's Demarcus Russell handing it off up the middle out to the 25 maybe the 26 yard line. It's Ali Broussard and tackle is made by Danny Verdun Wheeler. You know I'm not a big proponent of you know, fans and media talk about revenge you know a lot and, and the reason I don't think that's that big a deal is because last year's team is different than this year's team but the memory from Atlanta of being physically manhandled in the SEC championship game I think was very real to these Georgia football players I think their intensity level today and their ability to play physical was noticeably uh, different than, than any time they played LSU last year. Second down. Keep it on the ground. Out to the 32-yard line. That'll be a first thing. First down. Well, let's go back to that game after a close game in the regular season. LSU and Georgia in the championship game. Justin Vincent got outside 201 yards for the freshman running back. Billy Bennett had a field goal. And that made it 17-6, but uh, a big interception. Lionel Turner returned it off David Green. And the championship as LSU rolled over Georgia, 34-13. Fumbled snap. Appears to have been recovered by LSU. Looks like Jamarcus Russell got it back. You know, not only did LSU run the ball so well as we take a look at this again remember Wilkerson out Rudy Nieswanger is the center now and uh, not a very clean exchange between he and Russell but not only did the Georgia defense get run on by that LSU offense last year but Mark Rick told us that SEC championship was David Green's worst game of his career but he is more than made up for it today total yards big edge Georgia second down and 12 Russell back and the pass inside. I just happened out of the corner of my eye to watch the collision between Andrew Whitworth and David Pollock. <laughs> and it was, my goodness. We've reached the end of three. Mark Rick telling Tracy Wolfson we've got to recapture the emotion and the enthusiasm we had in the first quarter and a half. I think they did. That's the end of three, 38 to 10. We'll return to Sanford Stadium right after these messages and this word from your local station. On the money. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Only need one. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Best friends since they were six. Roommates in their final year at Georgia. David Green, David Fuller. Pass deep. Dwayne Bow slips through his fingers. And that's incomplete. 38 to 10 as we begin the final 15 in this battle for supremacy in the SEC. And uh, we talked early with David Green and Mark Richt about how close they were offensively. Right. Well, yeah, because defense had played well all season and then had kept them in every game. Offensively, they've just been missing. Maybe one guy here, one guy there. Plus, I think having Danny Ware back makes this a different offense. But they have clicked today. With the exception of a little lull there at the end of the first half, offensively, this has been a masterful per performance by David Green and the Georgia offense. Well, they are up by 28 as we get underway here in the fourth, and it's fourth down. Here's Jackson. Fair catch call by Tim Jennings. He makes the grab at the 30-yard line. You know, the other thing that Georgia has done today is they have really made LSU pay for their mistakes. Two fumbles, two Georgia touchdowns. The Xavier McDaniel mistake where he downed it on the one-yard line, Georgia touchdown. So the critical mistakes by LSU resulted in touchdowns for Georgia. D.J. Shockley back in at quarterback. 
He goes deep and he's got a man open. Couldn't quite connect with A.J. Bryant, a former high school quarterback. And uh, number 18 had a stride or two had Shockley been able to find him. Well, I expect uh, D.J. Shockley is going to get as much playing time in this game now as he had in, in better than a year. Yeah. David Green for the day, 10 of 18, 172, but five touchdowns. Yeah, and, uh, and credit that offensive line, the backs, too. Only one sack of David Green. He was hit five times, a couple pressures. Nothing like the two games last year, though. Hand off, Thomas Brown. He comes left to the 32-yard line. Tracy Wolfson tells us from the sidelines that Max Gene Gillis uh, with an injury, and he will not return to the lineup. The all-conference guard on the bench. Third and seven coming up next time, permitting the TIAA Craft College Football Today program. 38-10, third and seven, Georgia. Ken Shackelford, number 79, in at left tackle. Martrez Milner, what a big catch he had early in the third quarter. Get uh, George out of trouble. Here's Shockley. He'll run, and he will run a bunch, and he gets a terrific downfield block from his tight end, Martrez Milner. Well, this is a perfect call by Mark Rick. The quarterback draw. It's a design quarterback run right into the blitz. See, the blitz is going to come right here, and the quarterback draw is going to go right past him. I mean, this. It's like two ships passing in the night. Here's two unblocked blitzers. There goes the quarterback. They were expecting him to set up and throw. And a big run by D.J. Shockley. And again, that's what he brings to this Georgia offense. A little different dimension with his legs. 27-yard gain. Not only Martrez Milner, Reggie Brown had a fine block on the play as well. On first down and 10, here's Shockley. Oh, my goodness. Finds Danny Ware. And I don't think Danny Ware's real happy about that. <laughs> Whoops. Claude Roten, the guy in there supplying the pressure on DJ Shockley. Kind of a dangerous little uh, flip out there by Shockley. Roten beat his man early on the inside. That's Fernando Velasco, who's in there at guard in place of Max Gene Gillis right now. I had a flashback to my youth for just a moment there. Looks like DJ Shockley was going to try the old jump pass. <laughs> Did you throw a jump pass oh. or were you on the receiving end of one? I was, a, even in my early, early years, I was a lineman. Oh, okay. No, nah, I couldn't throw with a flip. <laughs> it will, Tim, and you know very well that every time I see the Utah pass, <laughs> Lee Groskup gets a pop. He's living in the Bay Area, the former Utah quarterback who started that back in the 50s one time number one draft pick for the New York Giants here's third down he's got Brown oh what a catch and Brown hangs on no he did not no he did not he made a whale of an effort for it though he went up in the air again this was uh, in between two defenders and he went up high to catch the football it's a good throw by DJ in between the two defenders Brown goes up high does he have control when he comes down I think that's a catch. I think he had control in the ground. When he hit the ground, that's what forced the ball to come out. I think he had control when he hit the ground. But it was a heck of an effort by Reggie Brown regardless. Oh, paid a price too. Yes, he did. Well, Ron Landry coming over there to cut his legs out from under him. Fourth and 12, Eli Kelso is on. Reggie Brown with a big day today. He and Fred Gibson. They did what they had to do, you know, making plays outside those two wideouts. Huge day for them. Eli Kelso back to punt. And this one will go out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Not where the uh, Georgia faithful thought they should. Comes out to the 17-yard line. Hugger the sixth. You know you have prominence as a mascot when you are introduced before the head coach. <laughs> and about 30 minutes before the game, they introduced starting lineups for all of Georgia. Then they introduced Uga Six. Then they said, say hi to the coach, Mark Richt.
We welcome you back to Athens, Georgia, where this has become a day to treasure for Georgia quarterback David Green. Yeah, five touchdown passes. We said one of the things LSU had to do to have a chance to win, they had to affect David Green. They had to rattle him, get him out of rhythm. They weren't able to do it. He's been spectacular today. Five touchdown passes and perfect ball placement on all of them. Very accurate throughout the day. Here's Jamarcus Russell on first down. He finds Dwayne Bow at the 30-yard line. It is 38-10. Georgia. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. Well, I'm here with David Green's parents, Rick and Kay. And Rick, how about your son's performance today? It's been a great one. They worked two weeks for this, and uh, he was really excited, said he thought they had a great game plan, and it looks right now that it has been. Kay, did you expect the game to go like this? No, I didn't. I thought it would be a lot closer, but I felt like all along, if we could get some momentum, that our offense was just ready to take off. Because David felt so good about what they were going to do. And I just felt like if we could get a little edge, we would just explode. So, anyway. <laughs> well, let me ask you, he's going to tie the all-time wins record here at Georgia today if they go on to get this victory. Has he discussed this with you? Not really. Um, he wants the all-time overall NCAA to beat Peyton. And uh, that one, that's a big record. And that's... That's one he'd like to have because it's a, it's a team it's a team win for everything. So, how much has he been thinking though about this game after what he went through in the SEC championship? Oh, probably since last December. <laughs> he wanted to play them good. He felt like the first game they should have come away with a win. I think they, the whole team felt that way. SEC game was not even a question. We were not even in the ball game really, but. He wanted it bad, and he felt like they could beat him. And uh, I'm just thrilled. Well, thanks a lot. And it looks like he's done for the day, so maybe you guys can sneak a little hug in there. <laughs> Back to you, Bird. All right, thank you. And uh, you tell Kay Green to tell David Green from Todd and me, he played good. Yeah, he did. I think he may be going back in. He's got his chin strap buckled up on both sides and a ball in his hand. And he was taking snaps from Russ Tanner a little bit ago. So we may see a little more of David Green. About to go 36 and 8 as a starting quarterback. Here comes Moses. And the Red Sea parted. The fifth Georgia sack in the ball game. Everybody worried about David Pollock on the other side. How about Quentin Moses? Beating Nate Livings. Right to the quarterback, Jamarcus Russell. Quentin Moses is the third defensive end. They've got a nice rotation with Pollock and Quentin Moses and the other starter, Will Thompson. Chris Jackson on to punt, fourth and 19. That's his ninth punt of the ball game. Jennings, fair catch. Georgia Bulldogs about to go 4-0. Nick Saban's team in trouble. August 6th can uh, rest for the rest of the day, but David Green cannot. David Green back on at quarterback, a crowd of 92,746. I'm a little curious yeah, about this. I am too, especially with after what we saw happen to Brody Croyle in Alabama a couple weeks ago with a 31 to nothing lead, I think it was. And the handoff, it's Thomas Brown who comes to the near side. I mean, you're up, you're up 38 to 10, and... Uh, You've thrown for five. This one is in the bank. He's about to go 36 and eight, but he's about to get his first win yep. ever against LSU. Yeah. George is still in the distance. Well, yeah, later on, he'll get another shot at the Florida Gators down in Jacksonville. But uh, this is a, and you could just hear it in his mom and dad's voice. This is a huge win for David Green. I mean, he's a competitor. He played poorly in the SEC championship game. He played hurt in the game down in Baton Rouge last year. And he's played brilliantly today. Second down, green back. Down low, catch is not made. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. We go back to Todd's keys to a Georgia victory. Well, they had to be physical. They rushed for 176 yards, and they held LSU to 76 yards rushing. And then they had to make big plays outside. Look at what the wide receivers have done. Nine catches, 187 yards, and all five of Georgia's touchdowns wide receivers. 
Get complete game stats at CBSSportsLine.com. Third and 12, 38-10, Tennessee next week. LSU has to go to Florida. I mentioned going to break that this is a really significant loss for LSU. We'll amplify that thought here in just a second. Here's Thomas Brown. He stayed in bounds. Daniels was an eagle and pushes him out of bounds. But a big, big run by the 5'8 freshman. And that's the first time that this LSU defense has looked really tired to me. I mean, they have had the game taken to them by this Georgia offense. And Thomas Brown with fresh legs in there. They've done a nice job of rotating he in with Danny Ware. And a big fourth quarter run for Thomas Brown. 46 yards on that scamper for Thomas Brown. And a first down just inside the 15. Boy, I like these two young backs. They, they are both nice-looking players. Danny Ware and Thomas Brown. Backs in the eye on first down. 9.03 to go. Here's the handoff to Brown. Does a nice job of holding on to the ball. And gets down to the three-yard line. Now this week's Scholar Athlete presented by Red Lobster. And it goes to backup center Ryan Schnetzer. He's... Uh, Intending to go to medical school, wants to go to the Medical College of Georgia at Augusta. He's well on his way. Last uh, semester's grade point average of 4.0. Biology major, Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Georgia's General Scholarship Fund. 224 yards on the ground for Georgia. Well, add four more to that inside to the nine-yard line. It's Jeremy Thomas, number 41. Hey, you look at uh, Nick Saban, and you think, well, where does he go from here? What do they do? I mean, they've got to go back, and they've got to get to work on Florida, who's going to be another explosive offense that his defense will face. And I think the one thing that we might see from LSU next week is I think he might go with Jamarcus Russell from the get-go. I think at this point now with two losses, and kind of behind it in the SEC West. I think that they go with Jamarcus Russell and say he's the guy that's going to be our best bet to uh, to win, not only now, but in the years to come. Flags are down. This is going to be uh, a pre-snap penalty, so bring it back. Well, and they lost, of course, to Auburn on the road in that uh, post-hurricane game. Nick Saban's team thought they played last week in the 51 nothing win over Mississippi State with what he called relentless competitiveness and it looked like they were getting it back in the second quarter today but uh, formidable task yeah. for them now. Well and I think the biggest difference is that Mississippi State didn't play back with the same relentless competitiveness that Georgia has today or that Auburn did a couple weeks ago. Yeah there is a significant difference in the quality of Bulldog. Yeah from absolutely. one week to the next. I think Sylvester Croom was uh, is going to do a good job down at Mississippi State, but uh, he's got a ways to go. And this Georgia team has played like the number three team in the country today. And there was a lot of question whether they deserved that high of a ranking, but they sure look like it today. First and goal, Georgia. David Green still in the quarterback with 7:28 to go. Timeout, Louisiana State. Tigers trail the Bulldogs by 28. 7.28 to go in this one. 38-10 Georgia. Bulldogs about to go 4-0 and a record will be kept intact. LSU has never defeated a team ranked third or higher on the road in their history. First and goal. Handoff. Sweep. Thomas Brown to the one-yard line, stays in bounds. Well, the one thing I think that the reason that Nick Saban called timeout so emphatically back there, even though they're getting spanked pretty good in this game, this defense has still not given up a rushing touchdown all season. And, and so you, you look for any little sliver of pride that you can hang your hat on. And uh, they don't want Georgia to stick another one in here running the football here with six and a half minutes left in the game. Or 6.50 something 653 there we go two <laughs> zero 
Second and goal. Thomas Brown. Two fullbacks in. This is Jeremy Thomas leading the way. Here comes the handoff. Another fullback helps. And it's a touchdown. Georgia. Now LSU has given up a rushing touchdown for the first time this year. And you saw the power of little Thomas Brown there. He's listed at 5'8", 185, and he ran right through a much bigger LSU defender for that touchdown. Cameron Vaughn was the recipient. And he's listed as 6'4", 240, and watch Thomas Brown stick his headgear right in his chest and run through him to the end zone. Andy Bailey. Nice job of holding by Lee Jackson. Six minutes and 36 seconds remaining. Bulldogs by 35. Goodness. 45 to 10, Georgia. This is the most points ever given up by an LSU team in. Nick Saban's tenure. That last drive, 60 yards, seven plays. And this is a Georgia offense that scored 13 points in the win here against Marshall. 20 points in a comfort behind win against South Carolina. They have exploded today. Here's Skylar Green. Keelan Johnson makes the tackle. And a uh, timeout to take a look at the play of the game presented by Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim, described by Larry Munson. Green looking at the defense. Green takes it. They're coming on him. He dodges a guy, throws on a run to right, right touchdown in the corner. Sean Bailey in the corner, number four, weaving around a guy on a five yard line and caught the ball in the chest around the four and just shot him. A lot of guys playing for LSU. <laughs> Here's a new quarterback. Uh, Marcus Randall's back in now. And Joseph Adai makes the catch out of the backfield. Wide to the left side. Well, Larry Munson has been describing uh, games for Georgia since 1966. He's in his early 80s. Just announced that he's among those who has been selected for the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. <laughs> He is something special. Yes. First and ten. Randall out of the backfield. A die to Georgia Bulldogs. Oh, boy. And there's a fumble. Yeah. Brandon Miller pounces on it. Georgia ball. Yeah. Joseph Adai was fighting for extra yardage. You know, you, you applaud his effort at this point in the game. Down 35 fighting and scrapping but uh a lot of times when you're doing that that's when the ball gets knocked out and that was trey battle the backup safety he was in there and knocked the ball loose for georgia dj shockley will come on now for the georgia bulldogs third turnover of the ball game and the most points allowed since a loss to steve spurrier's national championship team at florida Imagine the old ball coach is watching this one. I'm sure he watched this afternoon. From, from some beach in Florida. Ah, uh, Timmy, you are a fountain of knowledge. Some of it helpful. <laughs> Second and eight. Here's Shockley. At the 39-yard line. Yeah, we were questioning why David Green was on the field. Let's get more from Tracy Wolfson. Yes, you were. DJ Shockley actually had the wind knocked out of him, as you mentioned. So he was taking snaps, and as you see, he's back in the game. All right, Tracy, thank you. You know, one of the things to keep in mind about this, what appears to be a convincing Georgia win, four minutes and 45 seconds left, this will be their 17th straight win at home, which uh, is second only to the school record 24 recorded by the Georgia Bulldogs under Vince Dooley from 1980 to 83. The last time Georgia lost a game here, we were here for Auburn in 2001, 24 to 17, the inexplicable game. <laughs> oh, goodness. There's a sack back to the 50-yard line. 
And Tracy talked all about that defending their home turf, you know, and that was a big theme for them. And uh, boy, they did it in convincing fashion today. Very, very tough to win on the road in this conference. It is a uh, a lot of tough places to go and play. And, uh, this was not a friendly environment for the LSU Tigers today. Well, they fell behind 24 nothing. Scored 10 unanswered late first half. And uh, then couldn't get anything going in the second half. It's been all Georgia 45 to 10 right now. Ely Kelso is on the punt. Fair catch. Taken by Skyler Green. No, oh, I'm sorry. It went over his head into the end zone. He fooled me. I think that CSI steamboat is going to have something to do with the Bears that were in your backyard <laughs> this past week, wouldn't it? Oh, boy. Call me Grizzly Adams. Sitting on the deck, I look out. We got a mama bear splashing in a pond, and the cub was 12 feet up in an aspen tree. That's when you call 911. Yeah. This catch is made by early Doucette, number nine. Pictures. Living out in the frontier in Steamboat. Well, the good thing for LSU, Ben Wilkerson's back in the game, and uh, that, that's good for them down the stretch as Marcus Randall is finishing things up today. Ben Wilkerson is a great college center, and he's going to be a great NFL center. He's very, very athletic. Here's Randall. That one tipped. And incomplete Trey Bat. Nope, it was uh, Thomas Flowers, number 29. Thought for a moment he had his first collegiate interception. A lot of zone defense for Georgia, just trying to keep everything in front of them right now. And you can see a lot of young, talented, fast guys on both of these teams. I mean, uh, these are two very talented football teams that are playing a lot of young guys. And right now, the majority of backups in there for the Georgia defense. Second down and nine. Randall pulls out, finds Dwayne Bow, number 80. And that's good for a first down for LSU. Well, let's take a look at the SEC East. Georgia comes in 1 0. Tennessee, of course, plays Auburn in a big game tonight. And uh, the LSU Tigers have got to be sitting here praying for a Tennessee victory. Florida 3 and 1 with their victory today. South Carolina. Alabama playing right now in Kentucky and Vanderbilt. And Tennessee comes in here next week. We'll have the telecast for you at 3.30 Eastern time. Randall comes right in and out of the hands of Dwayne Bowe. It'll be second down and 10 with 2.49 to go. It just, it's just so... Interesting to me, uh, as dominant as LSU was in the game last December, that's how dominant Georgia has been in the game today. And, and certainly the two teams are completely different than they were last year, even though there's a lot of the same principal characters, same coaching staffs, and all that. But uh, Georgia has won in every phase of the game today. Rushing, passing, uh, turnovers, kicking game, everything. Randall coming to his right. Brandon Miller, freshman linebacker. And Dwayne Ball coughs it up, makes a really artistic grab of that one. 12 yard gain as Dwayne Bow retains possession. This guy's having a good year. Dwayne Bow is going to be a very good receiver here at LSU. Now remember, LSU is replacing two guys. You know, and Michael Clayton was a first round draft pick by the Bucks. And Devery Henderson was a second round draft pick by the New Orleans Saints last year. They're two main guys. Down it goes early Doucette number nine at the 16 yard line for LSU and they'll hurry. Go without a huddle. That's a 19 yard game for the Tigers. LSU at Florida next week. They fall two games behind Auburn depending on what happens tonight. Up in Knoxville. Randall rolling right out of the gun. Dwayne Bow down to the two yard line. Keelan Johnson helps him up. 15 yards. That's his sixth catch of the game. First and goal with 
2.05 to go. Clock stopped as they reset the chain. Now the thoroughness of the victory, stunning. Randall, that's a touchdown, Louisiana State. Made by Xavier Carter, number 23. Well, a nice little bit of redemption for Xavier Carter. You know, he's the guy that made the mistake on the kickoff return. He can't erase that. But this will uh, this will make the plane ride home to Baton Rouge a little bit better for this young guy. Carter for the touchdown. And the extra point attempt to come. Jackson. That's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Chris Jackson has now missed four extra points this year. Well, Nick Saban said when he overkicks it, he yanks it and pulls it left. And he didn't overkick this one. I guess he underkicked this one because he pushed it right. He's missed four for the year. Derek Dooley is a special teams coach. Ryan Gaudet is the, the backup. Looks like they were asking for volunteers. Who wants to kick the next one? Nick Saban doing a little coaching. Now Jackson out. To kick off. You know, and in fairness, I mean, he shouldn't miss four extra points. But in fairness to this young guy, he's doing a lot. I mean, he, he punts and he kicks off. And, he, you know, he does the uh, field goals and he kicks off. I mean, that's what kickers do. You know, they're supposed to do their job. But he does a little bit more than, than most college kickers do. He was a quarterback in high school at a state championship team, River Ridge in Louisiana. And uh, the first to handle punts and place kicks in the last 19 years but has now missed four extra points this season onside kick attempt coming and it's taken by the uh, sure hands of Thomas Davis at the 48 yard line now well, David Pollock Got his third sack of the season, all in all, uh, like the Energizer Bunny. Yeah, and from the very first play, I mean, he had great intensity, great energy, a lot of attention by the LSU offense, backs, tight ends, giving them extra shots on their way out, but he was relentless in his pursuit of Jamarcus Russell and Marcus Randall when he was in there, and uh, a very solid performance from David Pollock. You know, David... I mean, he'll look at those numbers and he'll he won't be happy. He holds himself to a higher standard than any coach is going to hold him to. And he is very hard on himself, but uh, he makes so many plays that don't show up in the stats because he frees other guys up. Well, David Green gets five touchdown passes. David Pollock gets five tackles and a sack. So things will be uh, comfy in the apartment shared by the two of them. Offsetting penalties uh, just announced personal fouls on both and so we've got a first down and ten from the point of the uh, onside recovery second down and nine final 118 to go 45 16 Tony Milton comes left tries to get out of the tackle of Ryan Willis and can't quite we talked about the Georgia schedule and they've got Tennessee coming in here next week after that kind of a a tricky game for them. They've got to go to Fayetteville and play. They haven't been out there to play very much and uh, be first trip out there for David Green and Mark Rick. But uh, Matt Jones always gives Arkansas a chance and, uh, as he did today in Gainesville. But then of course the showdown with Florida and Jacksonville a team they've not been able to beat since Mark Rick's been here. Third down. Shockley will hand it off to Milton. He uh, tries to go right. Caught and dropped at the 49-yard line. That'll be the final play of the ball game.
Largest defeat in Nick Saban's tenure at LSU. This one will be tough to digest. Huge victory for the third ranked team in the country as they find an offensive spark for the first time since they rang up 48 on Georgia Southern in the season opener. And our player of the game, who else? David Green, five touchdowns. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. David, you said you guys needed to come out with intensity and get revenge. You did just that. How did you get it done against this LSU defense? Uh, I tell you, it was, it was tough. They got a great team. You know, we came out, uh, got some big plays early on, just kind of kept the momentum, kept making plays. And uh, it gets contagious when you start playing good. You know, it's, the, you know, it starts rolling, and we we're fortunate uh, that it went our way. You tie the mark for the most wins now in Georgia history. How big of an accomplishment is that for you? Well, it's huge. I mean, it says a lot about his program and, uh, you know, what's been going on the last three, four years. And and it's exciting. I, I came here just wanting to win games. I don't care as much about the stats and it, touchdowns. You know, you play the game to win, and it means a lot to me. Thanks a lot. All right. Congratulations. All right, Tracy, thank you. Congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs. They win it over LSU 45-16. Here's the lineup tonight. Survivor, Vanuatu, followed by CSI Miami and a 48 Hours Mystery. For Tracy Wilson and Todd Blackledge, I'm Vern Lundquist saying goodbye from Athens. We'll see you back here next Saturday as the Bulldogs take on Tennessee.